Today, I would like to introduce the mighty Rocktron Voodoo Wolf. For uh, those of you older guitar geeks like me, which are familiar with the 90s uh, rack guitar units, you may have heard or played the uh, Rocktron Voodoo Wolf, which was a, uh, yeah, very famous preamp in the 90s, I think. And um, what I especially like about the Rocktron products are two things. One thing is that they mostly they come with a uh, pre and a post gain uh, equalizer, which is very important because you can use the pre gain EQ to boost your uh, distortion stage. That is something which people are also doing uh, by using a pedal, but it's very convenient if you have it built in. And with the post EQ, usually you set the overall, um, yeah, the overall sound of the unit. Uh, please check out my videos about that. I made a video about pre-gain. Uh, I think it's called pre-gain equalization and post-gain equalization, something, some shit like that. In my channel. And um, the second point, which I would like to mention, is that these units, the uh, valve. Uh, the Prophecy, the Chameleon, um, they come with a kick as speaker emulation, which is way better than the uh, cap emulations in the early modeling units, like the maybe the pods when they came out and also the boss things, which were, at least in my opinion, not usable in a live situation. But with these things, the, the Rockton things, you can go direct to the front of house and um, you can get a quite a nice result. In fact, I think there's some bands which use it uh, live. Like, I don't know, maybe Dragon Force used Prophecy. Megadeth used the prof Prophecy. Um, and uh, yeah, but today, um, yeah, I've switched on my old Voodoo Valve. And it's basically a uh, tube driven DSP preamp, they said. It's a, a preamp with some tube in it. Maybe it's a marketing aspect. It's maybe selling better if you enter a tube. Although I don't know if it does that much. Um, I have the Rocktron Chameleon, which is to me the same preamp, just uh, with it's maybe no tube inside. And it comes with a, an effect section. And um, yeah, I created a sound, which is this. <laughs> It's a high gain shred sound with a lots of delay and uh, yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know about these units, they are a little bit difficult to dial in, at least from today's, uh, yeah, if you are used to today's units which come with a comfortable uh, graphic user display, they have these strange, uh, well, uh, display here where you have to adjust the parameters and you don't have any uh, nice pictures or maybe um, a uh, scheme diagram or some shit you don't have it like that you can just choose from pre-defined um, configurations it's a basically effect chains here you have I'm, I'm choosing the high gain chorus delay reverb uh, chain 
this patch. And um, what you can do then is um, you have some global settings, the output, speaker simulation and so on. Yeah, and uh, yeah, mute the hush offset. The hush is maybe uh, Rocktron's um, noise gate, which is working really good. It's also some thing, thing which they were way before the time in the 90s. Maybe they had the best uh, noise reduction system back then. A mixer thing where you can uh, basically decide how much of the effect uh, the signal is going to the effects and then you have the uh, maybe the blocks and the effects chain you have the uh, gain section which is called high gain here and you can choose between low and high gain uh, mode i'm currently in the low gain mode set the gain amount of course and a variety adjust which changes the sound the sound drastically <laughs> And uh, you have bass, middle and treble control and presets. But um, this is the, um, well, it's just the volume of bass, middle and treble and presets. But you can adjust the frequencies which are affected by bass, middle, treble uh, and presets in the post. Uh, EQ section, which I will come to in a second. Then you have the hush uh, noise reduction system, which is currently turned on. Threshold. And then you have the pre-EQ section, which I'm using to cut the lows here below 500 hertz. My may seem to be a little bit high for you, but I do it by ear, so it sounds good to me in this situation at least. And a mid control where I'm boosting um, currently around the 800 hertz. And then the post EQ section where um, you can yeah, set the Q, which is the, the bandwidth of the uh, frequency bands you are, um, you are using. And also, of course, the frequencies. So here the bass frequency is set as uh, uh, 68 hertz. It's cut, so set to minus 15. And yeah, you have the mid treble and so on. This is the. Um, the post uh, equalization, post gain equalization. You have the speaker simulator, which is currently turned on. You can choose from different speaker types, uh, eight inch, 10 inch, 12 inch, currently using the 12 inch, and you can adjust the, the mic position. Usually I reduce it a little bit because I think um, the uh, highs are a little bit, sound a little bit artificial if you raise it too much. Reactants. And uh, then you have the chorus block. And uh, currently it's turned off. Delay, reverb, title edit and some um, yeah, control assignment, which is basically you can s you, this, this um, unit is MIDI controller, but you can yeah, you can adjust which if, if effect is um, yeah, controlled by which signal, which is also very flexible. So for example, it has a wah uh, inside, so you can and adjust or control the uh, the frequency of the bar, of course, with a uh, with a media expression pedal. You can also assign everything else, like the amount of delay or the the gain. So it's basically what you would do with a modern um, modeling unit. Could do that back in the 90s. So um, to be honest, I uh, I had this uh, unit in the 90s. But it was way too complicated for me. I got a good sound, but it's more, it was more or less uh, yeah, by occasion because um, I didn't know enough, enough about uh, all the uh, effect uh, parameters. 
And now I know about it, but it's still, um, I have to say, a little bit complicated to dial in uh, a good sound. So, currently I just created high gain tones. I will show you another one with a uh, little bit of a chorus. <laughs> By the way, you have, a, you have an input control here, so this is also comfortable. You can um, yeah, adjust the unit to the uh, output of your guitar signal. Sounds very 8-ish to me. Maybe I can dial in a little bit more highs. Dial out a little bit bass. Maybe too much. some uh, maybe 4k so another sound this is more or less a uh, well a little bit of a different um, rhythm tone Sounds good to me, at least um, yeah, for uh, a unit which is that old. It has a uh, characteristic tone to me. It's, um, to me, these Rocktron units, they can create great tones. They sound great live. If you're playing through a um, two power amp and a four by 12, then you can get yeah, great um, tube tones or tube-like, tube amp-like tones. If you're playing direct, to me, they sound a little bit, um, they have their own characteristics, which is usually um, a little bit, um, yeah, they overpronounce maybe the, um, the high mids around the, uh, well, the 2K, usually they dial it back a little bit. But um, this helps in a high gain situation in most cases. So, um, yeah, they, um, 
if you go direct, which I definitely recommend with these, these things, then um, yeah, you can get great results. They need a little bit of tweaking. Prophecy is easier to tweak, I have to say. Um, I will show that in another video. But uh, yeah, this Woodwolf is a great unit. It's quite cheap in the used market. And uh, honestly, I don't know why Rocktron don't produce uh, anymore these kick-ass units because I think, um, yeah, they could, um, yeah, have great result, uh, great success if they sell, uh, they are still selling these units. At least if they would sell them with uh, maybe a PC editor or some, um, well, some better uh, user interface. So please pause your comments below, subscribe to my channel, see you soon, bye.